Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the liquid line receiver tank and what its purpose is. Just so you know, I cut one open so that you can see what the inside looks like. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Danfoss, and we have a link to their free e-lessons down in the description section below. A receiver tank is a buffer and storage tank for liquid refrigerant in a split system refrigeration unit that has a thermostatic expansion valve. The reason for that is, is you're going to have a different amount of liquid refrigerant in here based on the outdoor ambient temperature and the saturated temperature at the condenser coil along with the heat load at the indoor coil. The other reason that you have a receiver tank is on automatic pump down systems. So you're going to pump the refrigerant down into that receiver tank if you have a liquid line solenoid valve. And what that's going to do is during the pump down, it's not going to allow all that liquid refrigerant to get stuck in that condenser coil. It's going to allow the liquid refrigerant to go into that receiver tank. The other thing is if you don't have a, a solenoid valve and you just have your king valve, you can perform a manual pump down procedure as well. So you're going to be able to store the liquid refrigerant in the system uh, in that receiver tank right there. The TXV's job is to handle the heat load at the evaporator coil in order to maintain its set superheat across that coil. So what it's going to do is it's going to allow more liquid refrigerant into that evaporator coil when you have a higher heat load in order to maintain its set superheat. And then you, it's going to allow less liquid refrigerant into that evaporator coil when you have a low heat load. So when you have a, a low heat load, you're going to have more liquid refrigerant backing up in that receiver tank and being stored there. The receiver tank's pretty simple on the inside. So you just have a dip tube coming from this service valve down to the bottom and you're going to have liquid in the bottom here and it's going to come up through this tube so here's where the liquid refrigerant enters in from the condenser coil and it comes in and then it just goes right up the dip tube over to this three position service valve otherwise known as a king valve anytime that you have a three position service valve mounted on the side or top of the receiver tank it's known as the king valve make sure that you don't get a receiver tank confused with an accumulator tank an accumulator tank is found on air conditioning systems and heat pumps in order to make sure that you only have vapor refrigerant entering the compressor. So on a heat pump, basically what you have is superheated vapor coming in, or you may end up having saturated refrigerant coming in if the outdoor coil is frozen during heat pump mode in the middle of winter, and it comes into this tank, and down at the bottom, you may have liquid refrigerant in the bottom of this tank, but what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that over here at the opening, it's only going to be sucking vapor from the top, coming down. It's going to pick up some oil at the bottom of the tank and a little bit of liquid refrigerant. It's going to come up here and it's going to continue over to the compressor. So this is a safeguard for the compressor and it's also a storage tank for refrigerant. But this is found on the suction line prior to the compressor. The receiver tank is after the compressor, after the condenser coil, and before the metering device. So you're going to have the filter dryer, the liquid line site after this, uh, and before the metering device, but this is on the liquid line. Right now, this three-position service valve is backseated, and when it's backseated, you have this port is cut off, and this tube is connected to this liquid line tube that would go to the TXV. When this is mid-seated, you'd have all three of these tubes connected and then when it's front seated this port would connect to this tube but th this line right here at the top going to the metering device will be cut off so that's how you'd be able to pump this system down if you front seated this you'd be shutting this off and as the pump down is proceeding you're going to have more and more liquid refrigerant getting stored in this receiver tank if you want to learn more about the refrigeration cycle the receiver and the accumulator tank Check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We have the full outline and sample pages over at our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.